We're here at Fern Acre Nurseries and today we're looking at maiden hair ferns and there are a number of varieties that you can buy both for indoors and a couple that will grow well outdoors. This maiden hair is a fine maiden hair called Adiantum fortii. It is also commonly known as bridal veil. One of the um, finer maiden hairs and a little bit fussy in terms of it doesn't like to be potted up too often. It likes to stay fairly contained. Relatively easy to grow if you remember that. Um, and it does over winter, particularly in colder climates, have a little bit of a dieback, but, come, but comes back fine every year um, when the weather warms up. This, this next fern is um, Adiantum fragrance. It is the most commonly grown maidenhair in cultivation. Uh, everyone has bought and killed one from a supermarket or nursery um, but as long as you understand the rules which I'll go through later of growing maiden hair it is one of the easiest and most successfully grown uh, maiden hairs in cultivation because it is so easy. This maiden hair is Adiantum Pacific Maid it is a compact maiden hair, which just simply means that its leaf form is grown closer together. And as such, it tends to have a stronger stem, which makes it stand more upright. The Pacific maid is um, really easy to grow, except if you water in the center of it, because it is compact, it is quite close together and you will f um, cause rot in the middle of the leaf structure. The leaves on the stems are actually a bit bigger, probably about a third bigger than the common fragrance that is, is normally grown. Really nice maiden hair that tends to form a rather large ball in its growth. And uh, if you don't want the drapiness of a normal maiden hair, it's, it's suitable for, you know, growing in, in a more compact space. These two plants are the same plant, however, they are different. This one is Adiantum hispidulum, an, an Australian native maidenhair, uh, commonly called the rough maidenhair. This one is Adiantum hispidulum variety whitei. The rough maiden hair has beautiful red, pinky red new growth, which will then go to bronzy colors, then to the bright lime green, and then harden off to a darker, more glossy green. The difference between the whitey eye and the hispidulum or straight hispidulum is that the hispidulum will grow quite upright whereas the whitey eye tends to have a more drapey effect and the edges of the foliage are somewhat serrated. Both have the colour changes, so the pink, pinky red new growth and the colour changes through to the dark glossy green that is common. Both of these can be grown as an indoor or outdoor plant but in an outdoor situation tend to protect them from overhead watering as much as you can uh, by growing them underneath larger plants. This is Adiantum gracilimum. Um, it is a finer maiden hair than uh, a lot of the others. Um, the new growth on this comes up pink and you can see little pinky tinges on the edges of the foliage there as it hardens off or as it matures it'll turn to the bright lime green and then contrast to the darker green foliage. Most people think that this maiden hair is tough to grow but in fact it's slightly tougher than the most commonly grown, the fragrance. Um, and even in a cold area like King Lake 
it doesn't tend to have the, the winter blues that most maiden hairs will have. It's a fine, very drapey um, maiden hair that is just a, one of my favourites. It's just so easy to grow. Um, even if you get your watering a little bit wrong, um, as soon as you correct that, they, they tend to come back very vigorously. I don't have enough praise for this one. It's one of my favourites, as I said. It's just really, really pretty. This is Adiantum Fritz Luth. It is a cultivar. You can see the new foliage is bright, bright green, but the darker foliage is quite blue. This is a blue variety. There is a straight green variety, but I don't have available at the moment to show you. Again, it's another compact um, form of maiden hair. But the interesting thing on this one is the triangular shape of the leaf formation. Uh, you can also see on this plant where moisture has got into the center from somewhere and is causing a little bit of dieback through rot on the actual top of the leaves. It's a really pretty plant, easy to grow indoors or on a protected position outdoors, um, but not really a garden plant. This fern is Adiantum aethiopicum. It is the native maiden hair and is a great one for growing outdoors. Not really suitable for pots as it is a scrambling variety. And once it fills up a pot, it tends to have the habit of dying back because it's got nowhere to go. Otherwise, it will gravitate to the bottom of the pot and start growing out of the drainage holes then it gets issues with root rot and other things. But as a, a garden plant, it is superb. If you've got a space to fill in, uh, this is the one that you go for because it will, because of its scrambling habit, will um, gravitate to open spaces um, and more open areas where it's got access to light and it will fill in underneath all the other ferns in your fernery. It's quite easy to grow provided you remember to water. And like all maiden hairs, because the foliage is so fine, tend to avoid overhead watering. Um, seepage water is always better in the garden because it's not wetting the foliage and causing the common browning off through either rot or wind friction uh, burn. This is Adiantum micropinula. Uh, again, one of the finest maiden hairs. It tends to be a little bit tangly, but the, um, the new growth again comes up pink, goes through the color changes. It is, can be a little bit difficult to grow because it has a tendency to have very heavy ends to the foliage which cause the older fronds to drop down and sometimes break. But it is a very rewarding um, maidenhair. It's just a cloud of, of really fine leaves, a collector's dream, really. Um, it does die back a little bit over winter, more because if there's any moisture on the foliage, it tends to cause burning of those very fine leaves. Maidenhairs in nature tend to grow along creekways and gullyways where they, or even embankments where they have a certain amount of exposure, not always direct sun, but at least very bright light. They love, love, love light. I can't emphasize that enough. It's important to understand this when you are growing um, in cultivation at home in the garden. They have a combination of good light exposure, constant moisture, although they are not an aquatic plant, they often have their root system dabbling in the edges of creeks and waterways. So it is important to have a dish or some sort of um, water system where they have constant moisture. We always keep moisture in in the dishes underneath the plants 
um, and that is really important because if they go a couple of days without moisture they get very cranky and will start the process of dying back if your plant has dried out it is important to soak that plant overnight with a little bit of very weak liquid fertilizer so that the moisture penetrates into the center of the plant and um, soaks the root system right through um, in terms of general upkeep it's important to water your plants little bits but often so try and associate it if you're not used to growing um, maiden hairs try and associate it with something that you do nearly every day and give the plant a small amount of water so that the 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 potting mix that it's in stays moist and doesn't dry out because you are what watering so often it is important also to fertilize on a regular basis if you're using a liquid fertilizer use it at two-thirds the recommended strength and um, do it at least monthly right through the year when they're growing in nature like i said earlier they commonly grow on embankments or creek sides or some something like that so they're not only getting the moisture they're getting a constant slow stream of nutrient running past them it's almost a bit like um, nutrient system for plants um, if you're growing indoors which a lot of these will be quite happy to grow indoors always rotate your pot a quarter of a turn each week so that you get good even growth if you don't do that they tend to lean towards the light source or the side that is darkest will start to die off um, and then people get disappointed just by rotating the pot a quarter of a turn each week keeps nice even growth that will provide a happy plant and a happy experience with your maiden hair when repotting your maiden hair um, use a good quality low nutrient potting mix and mix two-thirds of your potting mix with one-third of peat moss or cocoa peat it helps maintain the moisture within the pot and it stops the compaction of the soil that is quite common with modern day potting mixes simply take your plant out of the pot and put it into the next size up pot if you don't want to go to bigger pots you can split maiden hairs um, just shake off some mix uh, potting mix and look for natural breaks within the group they tend to grow in clusters so you can always break through the middle of the cluster um, to get a, a smaller clump to pot into back into the same size pots so that's it for maidenhair ferns there are lots of varieties some suited for growing indoors and some you can actually grow outdoors. For more information, visit the website. Subscribe to the YouTube channel for regular updates on all aspects of gardening. And as always, good luck with your gardening.